If you haven't voted, you got about an hour and a half to do so. Our Vote 2004 coverage continues with World News Tonight. On World News Tonight, this election day, millions of Americans go to the polls. In a dead even race, it is all about getting your supporters to show up. There are long lines in many places. If there are many, many new voters, what difference might it make? And will the cables and the networks get it right this year? We certainly hope so, and we'll show you how our systems have been changed. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening, everyone, from our election headquarters in New York City. We all know how important this election is to millions of people. We will be right here for the entire evening until we get all the results and are able to explain them. We have a very large team of people here and in every state to report this great event. In many parts of the country today, though we can't put a number on the turnout yet, there appears to have been a determination to vote and be counted that reflects the country divided about who should really lead for the next four years. There is no mistaking the enthusiasm to vote in many places. Make history, y'all. Make this one. Before the election, the political parties had speculated that as many as 120 million people might vote. We have talked today, more importantly, we have listened today to a lot of people in a lot of places, and here's a sample. We do need to get out here and put our votes in. That's important. Voting for the person who's going to keep us safest. And that would be? <laughs> I'm, I'm voting for Bush. I'm still undecided. We need more jobs, more educational programs. Yeah, I think it's time for a change. W's for victory. Every Mr. Bush voted at a firehouse in Crawford, Texas. Wish him all the best. And uh, he's, he's, you know, he, he and I are in the exact same position. We've given her all. And um, I'm, uh, uh, I'm sure he is happy like I am that the campaign has come to a conclusion. Mr. Kerry voted at the Massachusetts State House in Boston. I'm very confident that... We've made the case for change, the case for trust in new leadership, a new direction, a fresh start. Make sure that they're aware of where their polling site is. There are two great armies of volunteers out there today working for Mr. Bush and Mr. Kerry. Your only job today is just to get them out to those polls. Hundreds of thousands of people urging supporters on, walking or driving them to the polls. We really could uh, use your support this year and the president would appreciate it. Some of the volunteers from both parties have traveled far and wide to squeeze out every vote they can. Woo! On for Kerry! Well, tonight is all about how the electoral map shakes out. The 11 or so battleground states are there in yellow. Now, watch this. As it changes, this is a visual representation of how much more weight states with greater population have in the Electoral College. Ohio, of course, you can see, looms large, and we are reminded once more today that no Republican has won the White House without the Buckeye State. It took some patience to participate in the process there today. ABC's Claire Shipman is in Columbus. Claire? It did, Peter. And in fact, Democrats have been quite worried about the issue of turnout in the event of bad weather. There was plenty of bad weather in Ohio today, but so far, it appears that Ohioans have been willing to brave all of the elements. The rain wasn't bothering them, nor the prospect of hours in line. This is a privilege, and I am absolutely amazed. I have never seen this many people out here to vote like this. It's fantastic. In fact, election officials predict a million more voters will hit the polls than did in 2000. Please vote for President Bush today. Hit out the vote efforts continuing well through the day. John Kerry needs you. Come on out. Let's vote. These young Republicans in Cleveland often found there was no need. Just got back from the polls. Excellent. Some groups, like DemocraticMoveOn.org, were trying a scientific approach. Thank you, Diane, for stopping. And we won't be calling you. If people tell you they voted for John Kerry, then you're not going to call them later in the exactly. day. Exactly. That's the whole purpose. After a flurry of late-night court rulings, controversial poll challengers were allowed at the polls today. Behind the registration desk is Henry Ecker, a Democratic challenger. We're not planning on challenging anybody. Republicans were expected to do most of the challenging of newly registered voters, and Henry found himself with very little to do when his Republican counterpart didn't even show up. 
And across the state, we're told there was very little challenging. It was mainly observing at the polls. It seems, Peter, that the story here was big turnout, little trouble. Thank you, Claire. Talk to you later. Claire Shipman in Ohio. Incidentally, according to Federal Election Commission figures, the highest turnout in recent decades was in the 1960 election, when about 63 percent of eligible voters cast their ballots. As we said, it's not possible to characterize accurately on a national level any turnout at this hour. But there's pretty strong visual evidence in places that count that people know they count. ABC's Bob Woodruff, for example, is in Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, the poll is now open. From the moment the doors opened, it was clear that turnout would be high. Yes, 1507, you're right. Nancy McDonald has worked at this Tallahassee polling place for six elections. Last time, only 50 voters showed up all day. This time, hundreds in the first few hours. At 7 o'clock, we had a line up to the little house up here. Wow. Yeah. Unprecedented for this Oh, one. yeah, absolutely. It's wonderful. John Edwards was the only major candidate to visit Florida today. Nice to see you again. Most of the last-minute campaigning... Excuse me. Excuse me. Have you voted? ...was left to the workers on the ground. You know, we have to be very polite about this. Very polite, but very annoying. Although there were a few reported problems, glitches in voting machines, absentee ballots never received, party challengers had almost nothing to challenge. Leslie McCallum was turned away because she admittedly failed to change her address in time. So if you want to vote, you have to go to Orlando? I have Orlando. to drive to Orlando. <laughs> Are you going to do it? Probably not. Florida's officials and people seemed intent on avoiding the embarrassment of 2000. I think all is going to go well. Uh, everybody knows that they're under scrutiny this, this time around. In fact, officials are being so cautious here, the Florida Highway Patrol canceled all of its roadside checks and speed traps today to avoid the kind of accusations leveled against it in 2000 that police were trying to stop minorities along the roads to keep them from voting. Peter, as one person said today, Florida just does not want to be the next Florida. <laughs> Many thanks, Bob Woodruff. Bob Woodruff in Florida. He'll be with us throughout the evening, of course. You can only imagine what it's like inside the two campaigns themselves. The candidates and the staffers who work so hard are waiting, I suspect anxiously along with the rest of the country to see how things break. A good many questions will be answered tonight about which voters have really been motivated and why. President Bush will be watching from the White House. Our White House correspondent Terry Moran is there. Terry? Peter, the President arrived back here at the White House this afternoon and he's now up in the residence with his family, including his father, the 41st President of the United States, his mother, some close friends and his top aides, all of them now just awaiting the returns. After he voted this morning, Mr. Bush, the first lady by his side, told reporters he was at peace. I trust the judgment of the American people. I, I love our democracy, and I, I have got great faith in the wisdom of the people of this country. His aides stood nearby, betraying little emotion, but Mr. Bush, hoping for something decisive, and, uh, then revealed a rare trace of I, doubt. You know, it would be nothing better for our system, for, um, for the election to be conclusively over tonight so that uh, I think it's going to be me so I can go on and and uh, lead this country then it was off again aboard Air Force One for one last appearance his 33rd in all-important Ohio take the ramp on the left towards Wheeling at his campaign headquarters in Columbus Mr. Bush stopped by to thank the volunteers there and elsewhere I have been uh, uplifted by the fact that thousands of people are working on my behalf and the fact that thousands pray for me and Laura and our country. Then the president got to work and had a little fun picking up the phone himself to call a skeptical voter. I promise you it's me. <laughs> he seemed pleased with the result. One to nothing. <laughs> Finally, it was back to the White House where just about the entire staff turned out to welcome him. So the plan for tonight is for the president to remain here at the White House working the phones for those last minute adjustments in some of the key states and getting the information and then win or lose he'll head over to the Reagan Federal Building here in Washington where his supporters are gathered for the results. Many here. thanks Terry. Terry Moran at the White House. This has been a marathon for Senator Kerry and he didn't have Air Force One. 698 days since he formed his campaign exploratory committee in December 2002. He's been in 41 states by our count and many of them more than once. Today the senator made one final dash and ABC's Dean Reynolds who's been our reporter on the Kerry campaign for quite a while is with us tonight. Dean? Peter, as he ended his campaign today, Senator Kerry called it an uplifting experience 
and a great statement on the power of democracy. In the wee hours of this morning, in a cold and wet La Crosse, Wisconsin, John Kerry was still at it. Today is a day of a new beginning. It's that magic moment when the greatest democracy on the face of the planet gets to show the world how we work. The senator drew big and enthusiastic crowds on his last night of campaigning in Cleveland and Detroit. If you do your job, help is on the way. Nervous optimism would best describe the mood among his staff as the campaign dashed across the battleground states. An 11th hour push that left the candidate exhausted but exhilarated. And together we will change America. Thank you. God bless you all. Let's get the job done. Campaign officials said they were getting reports from the field suggesting that a big turnout was in the offing. Something they said increased their optimism about the evening ahead. And Peter, all this afternoon, the senator has been giving satellite interviews to key TV markets in battleground states. As he said today, I never want to leave any stone unturned. Thanks, Dean. Dean Reynolds with the Kerry campaign, who we'll hear from several times throughout the evening. When we come back, our special election coverage continues. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings, brought to you by Pacific Life. Like a human fingerprint, each whale's fluke is unique. At Pacific Life, we know that no two individuals have the same financial goals. For over 135 years, we've used our experience to help millions of Americans reach their goals. Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. My simple solution, my Lanta. My quick fix, my Lanta. For your heartburn, my Lanta soothes and calms on contact. My way to go, my Lanta. My security blanket, my Lanta. And now there's a new sensation of cool, new orange cream, my Lanta. My easy answer for heartburn. My heartburn, my Lanta. You know about Allegra, but you should know about Allegra D. It just may be music to your ears. Ask your doctor about Allegra D. You need to know about it. So I put on this new Thermacare heat wrap for knees. It heated up and it was all downhill from there. With less knee stiffness, less pain. Nice. Oh, and since the knee wrap can go anywhere I go, I'm gone. Sometimes all the right moves can't give high cholesterol the slip. If you're at risk and diet and exercise aren't enough, adding Lipitor can help lower your bad cholesterol 39 to 60 percent. And Lipitor has proven benefits for your heart. Lipitor is not for everyone, including people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about other medications you are taking or if you experience muscle pain or weakness as they may be a sign of a serious side effect. So take the next step. Ask your doctor about the benefits of Lipitor. As we said at the beginning of the broadcast, long lines have been a common sight at many polling places today. There was concern before today, as you probably know, about whether there would be problems. Both sides may or may not be prepared for the worse. We have something very important for our coverage tonight, and it's called Ballot Watch. The man who mans the ballot watch desk for us is ABC's Jake Tapper. Jake, what's it look like out there in the country today? Well, nothing too serious as of yet. Both sides, of course, are accusing the other of various dirty tricks in various states and counties. But we haven't yet seen the kind of legal and political escalation that both sides had threatened. And 
both parties appear to be very prepared to make challenges in large numbers if, if they think it's necessary. Oh, yes. The Democrats have more than 10,000 lawyers scattered throughout the country. They have six planes fueled and ready to go just in case any hot spots emerge. And they've already saved up $6.7 million for any post-election legal battles. The Republicans, too, have eight to 10,000 lawyers scattered throughout the country, eight planes fueled and ready, and they have saved up about $10 million. Now, here's the point, though, Peter. Though we've heard about lawsuits and all sorts of complaints all over the country, not one of those planes has taken off. That's encouraging, I think. Memories of 2000 election very much on people's minds. Many thanks, Sheikh. When we come back this evening, our special election coverage continues. Millions of us are hospitalized with heart-related chest pain or a certain type of heart attack, what doctors call ACS. The cause? For most, it was blood platelets that form clots, which block blood from getting to the heart. Think aspirin and other heart medications alone are enough? Plavix could help make a difference. So ask your doctor about adding Plavix. Taken with aspirin and your current treatment, Plavix goes beyond what you're taking to help raise protection against heart attack or stroke. Plavix and your other medications work in different ways. Plavix taken with aspirin plays its own role in keeping blood platelets from sticking together and forming clots, which helps keep blood flowing. If you have a medical condition that causes bleeding, such as a stomach ulcer, you shouldn't use Plavix. The risk of bleeding may increase with Plavix and when you take Plavix with certain other medicines, including aspirin. Review your medicines with your doctor to minimize this risk. Additional rare but serious side effects could occur. Add more protection against heart attack or stroke with Plavix. What makes CVS Pharmacy the leading drugstore in America? With prescriptions ready when promised, we've done away with waiting. CVS Pharmacy. Expect something extra. Day after day, drop after drop, you test your blood if you have diabetes. But what if the information you're getting isn't right? If you don't code properly, your readings can be up to 43% off. 43%. And that's just a waste of all those little drops and all your efforts. So Bayer developed the Essentia Contour Meter. There's no coding needed, so you get the information you need from every single drop, every single day. The Essentia Contour from Bayer. There's an easier way to get a six-month supply of clean, great-tasting water. Pure water filters. Bottled water quality right from your faucet. Pure water filters. Your water should be pure. Got gas? Pressure? Bloating? Tums doesn't treat gas, neither does Pepto-Bismol. To treat gas, use Gas-X for fast, powerful relief. Popcorn? Gas-X beats the bloat, and acids don't. Tomorrow, crossing the finish line. After a race so tight, who will be president? And what's next for the country? For full election night results and in-depth analysis, watch a special edition of World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. This is how your trust is earned. One of the most important people at ABC News is our political director, ABC's Mark Halpern. He's important every day, but he's really important tonight because he's going to watch the exit polls for us. Mark, I know you've had a chance to look at them a little bit so far. Do people appear to have confidence in the system today is my first question. They do, Peter. In preliminary data, we, of course, talk to people as they leave the polls all day long. This is only preliminary data right at the beginning. We've talked to a lot of voters, though, around the country. And given all the stories about problems in voting, a pretty high level of confidence. So far, we've found... 91% of voters are confident that the votes in their state will be counted accurately. Only 9% say so far in this preliminary data that they're not confident. Maybe reflected in the lack of challenges. Now, we've watched in the polls as we arrive at the election how close it's been. And there's always this question about the president's job approval. What do you pick up on that today? Almost nothing more important when you've got the re-election of an incumbent, in this case, George W. Bush. Do people approve of the job he's doing or not? It couldn't be the more, more basic number so far tonight in this preliminary data. 51% of Americans leaving the polls have told us they approve of the job he's doing. A little bit less than that of telling us they disapprove. Peter, that's right in the middle of that zone, the, the danger zone. Above the number where the president is so far, incumbents tend not to get reelected. Below that number, they tend to get reelected. And that's just one of 
Several areas we're finding, Peter, the country as it's been all year, very divided. Many thanks, Mark, Mark Halpern, our political director. Now I want to turn to my colleague, George Stephanopoulos, who sits at our right here all the time. A lot of talk, at least, around here today about the turnout. What do you sense? Turnout is the big story of the night, Peter. Either way, last time around, about 106 million Americans voted. Both parties are expecting more voters to come out this time. The Republican models, Karl Rove's model, is about 110 to 112 million voters. He thinks he can get a win in that zone by increasing the turnout of evangelical conservative Christians. So if you're in the 110 to 12 zone tonight, I think that's good news for the Republican Party. If you start to climb above that, in 115, 120 million voter turnout, that is more likely to be voters that the Democrats have been targeting, especially young voters. The new voters coming into the Absolutely. system who haven't voted before. Okay, so I'm going to ask everybody when we start a coverage, what's the one thing you're going to start to look at tonight? So I give you a head start here. Well, you know, we've talked a lot about big states, Ohio and Florida. I'm going to be looking at a little state tonight, New Hampshire. One, because I'm a political junkie and I love New Hampshire. No. But more important than that, President Bush won it last time around. If Senator Kerry picks it up, that's four electoral votes, a big insurance policy. On the other hand, if President Bush can hold that as a red state, and if you look up on the map, it's surrounded by a sea of blue states against a senator from Massachusetts right next door, that's a real sign of strength. And I know you've been working on the phones very hard today trying to get the inside clues from both campaigns as to how they're feeling. In 15 seconds or thereabouts, do you have any? Uh, I would say that in 15 seconds, Democrats are feeling good, feeling confident. Republicans a little more apprehensive, but they have a lot more to protect. Sure. Doesn't tell us much at this mm -hmm. hour anyway, does it? Many thanks, George. George Stephanopoulos and Mark Halperin and a lot of other people are going to be with us for our election coverage this evening, including, by the way, our coverage of the Senate. There are 34 seats in the Senate at stake in this election, 15 Republican and 19 Democratic. Just under a third of them look to be competitive. We'll follow them throughout the evening. One of the nastiest races, by the way, is in South Dakota between the Senate Minority Leader, Tom Daschle, and the former Republican Congressman John Thune. And in Florida, where we've heard good things about turnout today, the former Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Mel Martinez, and the Democrat, Betty Castor, are fighting for a seat vacated by the three-term Senator Bob Graham, who gave up his seat to run for president. When we come back on this broadcast, at least, the last report is about us. What have we done to improve our projections after Florida four years ago? A funny thing happens when your body doesn't sleep at night. Your mind zones out during the day. It's like going through life on autopilot. Out of sync with the world around you. To help you sleep, there's Ambien, the number one prescribed sleep aid in America. Ambien helps you fall asleep fast and stay asleep longer. So you wake up refreshed, not groggy. Until you know how Ambien will affect you, you shouldn't drive or operate machinery. Side effects may include drowsiness, dizziness, and diarrhea. You shouldn't take it with alcohol. All people taking sleep medicines have some risk of becoming dependent on the medicine. Prescription sleep aids are most often taken for 7 to 10 days as needed, or longer as advised by your doctor. Memory problems can usually be avoided by taking Ambien only when you can devote 7 to 8 hours to sleep. Talk to your doctor about Ambien. Ambien works like a dream. When you get the closeout price at Big Lots, you get more for the holidays. Like a huge selection of decor, priced up to half off what you'd pay at discount stores. Take home a musical carousel, closeout price $39.99. Get an 8-foot inflatable Santa or snowman, closeout price $25. An animated reindeer or 6-foot pre-lit tree, closeout price $19.99. For a festive holiday home with all the trimmings, there's just one place to start. Big Lots. Brand names, closeout prices, happy holidays. Not one of these allergy medicines can give you long-lasting seasonal allergy relief without the risk of drowsiness. But Allegro 180 can. For people 12 and over, side effects are low and may include headache, cold, or backache. Choose long-lasting prescription Allegra. We know that Senecott, with its natural vegetable laxative ingredient, has been hard to find. Well, your wait is over. Senecott, with the laxative ingredient proven to be effective in 50 clinical studies. Now in stores everywhere. 
News from Caltrate. The Surgeon General reports many Americans don't get enough calcium and vitamin D in their diet to maintain strong bones. For those people, he recommends calcium and vitamin D supplements. Get the calcium and D you need with Caltrate, America's number one calcium supplement. A heart attack can strike without warning, and doctors know 81 milligrams of aspirin is not enough to save your life during a heart attack. So you should always have genuine bear at hand. It has enough aspirin to help save your life. The more you know, the more you trust bear. You want flat and unobstructed, a little consistency? Try bowling. Tiger, VJ, and Ernie head the field as the top 30 in the game go at it. The Tour Championship, this weekend on ABC. What will this presidential election look like the morning after the vote? Tomorrow, for the day's first word on all the election results, turn to Good Morning America for the 2004 vote the morning after. It's not just politics as usual around here. Five this evening getting it right. We have no intention of sugarcoating it. All the networks, including this one, and certainly the cable channels, blew it four years ago in projecting a winner on election night. We cannot speak completely for the others, but we spent a lot of time analyzing what went wrong and how we can do things differently this time. With a lesson on that, so to speak, here's ABC's Bill Blakemore. Do we need to be reminded? The networks called Florida for Gore. Al Gore wins the state of Florida. Then took it back. Florida pulled back into then the... Then called it for Bush. George Bush is the president-elect of the United States. He then took that back. Our second major switch of the night. A perfect storm. Scientific projection, which had a reliable track record, suddenly gone all wrong. Revealing both flimsy voting methods and faulty projection models. The networks were called to Congress to explain what went wrong. This candidate... Can the ABC News has spent the last four years making sure such faulty projections don't happen again. The overhaul directed by polling expert Dan Merkel. The biggest changes are that we, we have new sources of data that we're, we're more confident in. And we have a lot more access to information. The old systems for gathering data have been disbanded replaced by the new national election pool created by the networks and associated press all day today a newly hired polling company edison matofsky has been collecting exit poll data asking people who they voted for in fifteen hundred sample precincts more than four years ago added to that data actual counted votes reported by the associated press with much more funding staff and software for double checking than in two thousand ABC's decision desk will be receiving far more information this time about absentee and early voters who turned out to be so vital in 2000's close election. And our computers have been loaded with more powerful mathematical formulas for projecting results. We will not make a projection until we're 99.5 percent certain. ABC News will not project any state if there appears to be less than one percent difference in the tabulated vote. Another layer of review has been added since 2000 this new oversight desk where every ABC projection will get examined one more time before it goes into the studio. Our decision desk experts will be isolated from competitive pressures so as not to be influenced when making projections. ABC News executives say the requirement is simple, that when ABC paints a state red or blue, it can stay that way. Bill Blakemore, ABC News, New York. And that is our report on World News tonight. It's exciting. We'll have election results throughout the evening as we get them. Our election coverage begins in just a few minutes at the top of the hour. Moments would be more precise. We hope you'll stay with us throughout the evening on your local ABC station. I'm Peter Jennings in New York. Calling ABC's Lost, TV's most addictive new drama. You don't know me. Take one look and you'll see why. Where is he? Is he alive? And all new Lost, Wednesday, 8, 7 central, only on ABC. News 2 at 6 starts now. This election is in the hands of the people, and I feel very comfortable about that. It's just a magical kind of day. And I want to thank you. I, I the candidates thanking their supporters tonight. Now all they can do is wait as the final ballots are cast and the returns start to come in. The race for the White House ends tonight. Good evening. I'm Ann Holt. And I'm Bob Mueller. Here in the Mid-State, thousands cast ballots today. In some places, voting has gone very smoothly. 
In others, it has not. We'll get to all of that, but we begin tonight with a look at what's happening right now at the polls. News 2's Scott Frolic begins our team coverage. He is live in Bordeaux. Scott? It's not very crowded. As a matter of fact, you might wait longer to order something at the drive through of your favorite fast food restaurant than you would to wait in line. Here, take a look. You can see that line was all of five people long. They have five booths. They've been able to get through this very quickly. They've had about 750 plus voters here today. They had a lot of early voting, 58% voted early. That's why they haven't been very busy, they say. It's been much busier here in 2004 than it was in 2000. But still, not very crowded, maybe, perhaps, because so many people voted early. And live in Bordeaux, Scott Frolic, News 2. All right, thank you, Scott. We're also keeping a close eye on the Davidson County Election Commission. County commissioners right now are right there. News 2's Melissa Penry has been there with them all day. She